Hello and welcome to this introductory video on resistivity. In this video, we're going to take a look at this question that's sort of been left in the air hanging um, in previous videos in which we've discussed resistance. We've mentioned that different materials have different resistances. We've mentioned um, a lot about thinking about ohmic resistors. But what we haven't fundamentally introduced is an understanding of how we might actually create a resistor of a particular resistance. So we know that resistance is measured in ohms, but how do we set or determine what values we're going to be wanting in some circuit maybe that we're building? So that's what this question is going to answer. Fundamentally, what determines the resistance of an object? Now, without giving it away, it's obviously going to be related to this idea of resistivity, but if we just think about even the things that we already know, we can basically motivate all of this, all of the dependence of a resistance. So what could resistance depend on? Let's think about it. First things first, certainly depends on the material. We know that as we swap materials, then that is fundamentally changing the way in which the current can flow through those things. That's really coming from various properties of the material, for instance, the number of valence electrons. The more you have, the easier it is to conduct a current, that sort of thing. So it certainly depends on the material, but that's not the end of the story. Because if it was, then we'd have very fixed resistances, discrete according to the material. But how do I then take some, pick some arbitrary material that sets off with some sort of resistance inherent to it, and then we want to be able to scale that, change it, so that we can make our special circuit have whatever resistance we require. It is not just the material, but it also depends on how much of it there is. So what do we mean by how much of it? So let's say we've picked a material, some sort of metal, it doesn't really matter. Let's say we picked something and we built some wire out of it. Now the wire looks like that. All right, and maybe our wire not very long, but maybe it has some length L. That certainly talks a little bit about uh, how much of the material there is. The other thing, though, is this dimension here. And I'm just going to specify this as an area because I don't really care about height versus width. I've just got a nice circular shape. So I've got a cross-sectional area, which we'll just say is A. And in fact, I could, if I wanted to, I could make a square. I should have drawn it in perspective. I could make like a little rectangular wire. Right, that's totally fine, or a square wire, or whatever this is. I guess this is a square prism. So I'll make my little square prism wire thing. Actually, it's more of a rectangle on the end. But anyway, I made some sort of weird shaped wire. I can still talk about the cross-sectional area and the overall length. Okay, so it doesn't have to actually be a cylinder. It could be whatever I, where we would like. but. We've got some cross-sectional area A and some length L. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, resistance is coming from the fact that we're using up energy to overcome some sort of obstacles that this wire is setting up. So maybe that, you know, just conceptually, maybe there's like little hills that the electrons need to get over. So if I have longer wire, then I probably have more of those hills. So what we're saying there is that the resistance should scale like the length of the wire. It should become larger the more distance I have to travel through the wire because whatever obstacles are present in this bit of the length, like between here, it's going to be here as well, and then here, and then here. if I add more, I'm adding more and more obstacles. So my resistance should scale that way. What about the effect of the area? Well, the area is sort of doing the opposite thing. And the analogy that we like to think of here is it's really like a traffic jam. If I have a one-lane road and I'm trying to force a bunch of electrons through there, well, what is it going to do? What, or what are the electrons going to do? Well, they're going to pile up. Then I'd have my little electrons all stuck here, and there's a whole bunch waiting to get through. But they're all waiting on this one lane. So that constricted path will have high resistance. On the other hand, if I add more lanes, well, then I can put my remaining electrons into there, and they can all flow at the same time, and I've now got more current flowing. 
So the area is exactly sort of the number of lanes that we've got. More area corresponds to more possible paths for the electrons to flow. So we know that the resistance is also going to be inversely proportional to the area. And then we can complete this relationship by saying that really the resistance goes as L on A. It's supposed to be proportional to both. That's what we've already derived here. But then, or at least not derived, but motivated. But then we can also just assume some constant for the constant of proportionality. And that constant of proportionality is what we call the resistivity of the material. So that's this guy here. This rho is the resistivity. And that's just talking about the fundamental properties that we mentioned at the start, describing things like how many valence electrons, etc., are present in that material. So in order to calculate the resistance of some resistor that you've built, you're going to multiply its resistivity by the length of that object divided by the area over which the current could flow. Okay. Now, resistance, R over here, has units of ohms. So in terms of units, what we've set up is ohms is equal to rho. We don't know the units of that yet. L has units of meters. Area is a meter squared. So rearranging rho, really the units, I won't we'll put that there, because we're all working in terms of units. The units of rho then are ohms times a meter. Okay, so that's the reason for the weird unit. It's just because of the way in which that constant of proportionality is determined. So this rho is a value in ohms meters, and it is a value particular to the material that you're looking at. And these things are tabulated. You can look them up for various materials 